just me today. It's just me and you. Uh, Kevin, what a guy, decided to take a vacation. He's in Mexico, in beautiful Cancun. And we had this, I, I told him, I'm like, you gotta rest. Like, he's like, I'm not gonna play the piano. I'm just gonna completely take a break. Guess what he just posted on his Instagram? Him playing the piano in the lounge. <laughs> I was like, seriously, Kevin, jeepers. So that's what Kevin's doing. Um, I'm here and I'm really happy to be spending some time with you guys. We're gonna be talking about rhythm primarily today, pop rhythms um, and accompaniment rhythms to help you when you're putting your chord progressions together or just kind of courting along to your favorite songs. Uh, but outside of that, I'll do my very best to answer all of your questions. So if you are in the members area today and you have questions, make sure you use the questions tab because then um, Amazing Joy, Piano Mod Joy, will get those questions into the right place that I will make sure to see them and answer them for you. And if you're joining us on YouTube, Hello, and thank you for being here. So chat away, Truman is here as well, hanging out in the YouTube chat to help answer your questions. <sighs> I just feel great. I just feel really happy to be here. Um, tell me a little bit about your piano adventures this week. How has the practicing been going? Have you practiced? I know it's only Monday, but have you practiced? If so, how did it go? Um, I will tell you that I recently filmed a tutorial for you guys on um, Turkish March. It just released in the members area. And uh, it was a challenge. So Turkish March has this section where you have to play these octaves. Uh, what is uh, how am I remembering this? <laughs> oh, it's this one. with myself I memorized it um that's the ending little piece at least in the art tutorial of Turkish March so you have to play these octaves while you play these rolls in the left hand and let me tell you I thought I could not do it I was like I cannot do this Eleni I cannot do this and she's like yes Lisa you can do this and I no I can't she's like you just have to practice so I practiced and one of my strategies was that I had to memorize that section because there was no time or space to actually look at the notes and integrate what I was doing unless I like had the muscle memory which is why I still kind of can do it uh, so anyways we're gonna show you a little preview of the tutorial check this out again. <laughs> Hello and welcome! Today we're going to be learning how to play Turkish March by Mozart, also known as that section again. <laughs> Hello and welcome! Today we're going to be learning how to play Turkish March by Mozart, also known as Rondo Ella Turca. Now this song is super famous, it's all over TV and the movies, and it's a great piece to have in your classical repertoire. Not just because it's famous and everybody loves it, but because it's going to help you to learn to play super fast. Let's dive in! So we're going to start with our fourth finger on B. We're going to move down to A, G sharp, take your thumb underneath, <laughs> so we included some of the bloopers at the beginning of that one because it was challenging and I just wanted to be honest with you guys about that experience. So anyways, it's a, it's a pretty fun song to learn. I highly recommend it. In the members area, we have the sheet music to download plus the practice feature so you can play right along, loop certain sections, speed it up, slow it down. It's, it's a great tutorial. Um, and it is fun. So I highly recommend all of you all check it out. It's in the members area already. Just go to songs um, and you'll see it there at the very top. Okay, so moving right along. Um, it's very, very different doing this without like a co-host. All of, I can't get distracted. I just have to try not to, I have to stay focused. Um, so today I wanted to show you guys something hilarious. It's kind of sarcastic. It's kind of funny. The guy's actually really good at playing the piano. I'd never seen this before. Um, so we're gonna show you a little clip of a bit of a this piano satire. Um, and I think it's really funny because I can I can kind of relate to this. So <laughs> check this out. Dark side. And I'll see you at the other end.
he's happy i think it's absolutely hilarious because i can personally shift moods that quickly myself maybe it's a piano player thing i don't know um okay all right just keeping up with the comments here okay so some of you guys have seen this artist before i i just first time seeing him today and i thought was absolutely hysterical i had a very good laugh ah hey terry hi everyone okay all right, friends, let's get into that. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's get into the teaching and the talking. So <clears throat> what we're focusing on today are rhythms. So how does everybody feel about rhythm? I want to know your thoughts. Is this easy for you? Do you struggle with it? Um, tell me how you feel about rhythm. Basically, my plan is I'm resurrecting a quick tip um, from the archives. So let me just grab you guys the link and I'll throw it in the chat. Um, Go. I'm putting the chat or it, I'm linking it up in the piano chat um, members area as well as on YouTube just in case you have access um, to piano and you're watching us there otherwise Truman's gonna put the seven-day trial link for you um, for free so you can hop in the members area should you want to um, this quick tip has some really great um, practice features in it that I will show you shortly actually Lisa you need to focus one thing at a time one thing at a time so we're talking about rhythm I'm waiting for you guys to tell me 16th notes depends on the day I struggle and work on it a lot Ed says I kind of feel rhythm okay this is good um it's hard hands together separately yep seriously struggle here okay if you are if you are I just how did I mess that up if you are in the members area, make sure you click on that because you're going to be able to access the practice along for these exercises. The quick tip is called three rhythms you need to know. Um, but let me let me walk you through one of them. Okay, so this one is going to be pretty. I'm just going to move this over here so I can stay focused on what I'm doing. This one's like my standard go to pop rhythm. So what I'm going to have you guys do is, first of all, we need to get comfortable with these movements because we're going to use a little inversion pattern. So C in root position, G in first inversion, A minor in root position, and then F in first inversion. So let's just do that a couple times. C, drop these two fingers down. Then we're going to go to A minor, and then we're going to swap to F. So one more time, C. And then if you can just get your left hand to follow along, just like this. So we've got C, G, A minor, and then F. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. But what I want to do today is I want to teach you how to do this. One and two and three. So what's happening is, is we're playing some of these notes on the and. So has anybody played that rhythm before? Is anybody feeling like, ah, <laughs> what is going on? Doug, that's very cheeky. What song is this, friends? Does it sound familiar maybe a little bit? Does it sound like something you've heard before? Um, I know that uh, it sounds familiar to me. Okay, I'm gonna draw you guys a picture. I know this is your favorite part of all of our um, piano t piano benches because I am such a great drawer. Do I send this to David's? Yeah. 
Chris. Oh, there it is. I just had David that first. This is the tech moment. Oh, it's working. Okay, everyone, check this out. Okay, this actually helped me so much. This is, if anybody has a great suggestion for an app, like a whiteboard app, I just found the sketch one and it's not the best. Okay, so we've got one, and I'm a terrible drawer, and two, and three, and four, and. So these ands are so helpful for helping us know where to place the beats. So what I want to show you is we're gonna play a left hand note here on the one, and then we're gonna play it on the and of the two, and then we're gonna play it on the three, and then we're gonna play it on the end of the four. So it's lining up very differently. We got these ands, well, and just like for those of you who are visual learners, look at how that all goes. So to, to put this together, one and two and three and four and. So where the circles and the check marks are, that's where our left hand is moving. One and two and three. We can move away from my artistic brilliance for a moment. Um, how does it feel? Are you guys able to follow along with that? Yes, yes, let it be. Let it be definitely uses that. Um, but what other songs would use that progression? You guys have got to have some ideas of other songs that would use the let it be progression. Um, <laughs> it's not always let it be. It's just a very famous song that has those chords in it. But there are other, you get bonus points. I'm gonna give a t-shirt to a piano member that can think of a song that uses that chord progression that isn't Let It Be. Hmm. Hmm. In that order, in that order. You get a t-shirt, send me an email, lisa at pianote.com, and I will get one sent out to you. Congratulations, that was awesome. Um, yes, we have some Sia, that it totally matches. Okay, so the cool thing about this rhythm is it's it can be more than just like this sort of finger picking thing that's going on. Because once you get this, you do octaves. Or you could hit to like have the opportunity to become more interesting when you take a rhythm and you learn it on one note and then realize that you can move that around to create a more exciting accompaniment. Now another one I wanted to show you is it's a really happy sounding little rhythmic pattern. So it sounds like this. It's really great for lots of songs. I want to hear you guys tell me what song that is. See if anybody has any ideas. Lena on YouTube's got I'm Yours. Yeah. Well, you done to me and you bet I felt it. Tried to be chill, but you're so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. Now I'm trying to get back. Hey, soul sister, ain't that Mr. Mr. on the radio? Stereo the sister that's awesome okay so how do we do it <laughs> um can anybody here play that rhythm i'm gonna walk you through it okay so we're gonna go left right left right left right left right and you can tap it left right left right left right left right and then bring it to the piano. So one and two and 
three, and four, and. Man, it gets way harder to know that you're doing it right when you slow down. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. So it's the and four, and, that you kind of have to be paying attention to, to get the rhythm. Um, how's that feeling for you guys? It does sound kind of reggae-ish. It has a moment. It's a really fun rhythm. So... You guys could totally take that and make your own um, rhythmic cover of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Wow, I just did a, this is amazing. The hair has its own mind. Uh, so it's, yes, um, Simon, it's definitely got more of a swing feel to it. It's really fun to take these rhythms and see if you can apply them to songs that you already know and love because it's going to take you out of your comfort zone you know Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. so you know that's where i'm used to playing it but when i throw Somewhere It changes the whole mood, it changes my experience of the song, it changes how I phrase it as the vocalist. It completely shifts everything. So it's a really, really good thing to experiment and play with. Um, yes. Okay. So there's another rhythm for you. Uh, and here's, uh, here's where we're going to shift things a little bit. So we're going to take this rhythm and we're going to sort of shift the movements a little bit to our right hand. So with our left hands, we're gonna do this. So it's root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth. So let's just rock like that. So what I want you to try doing is playing it here, then moving to G. Have any guesses what this kind of reminds them of? So with our right hand, we're gonna play C. G, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, C. Okay, so now what I want you to do is instead of just playing the single note, see if you can play a full chord. One, and two, and three, and four, and I've got a G chord here. to play around with because it it's a little bit it's a broken chord the movement feels a little bit different and I think that there is a lot of like fun improvisational things you can do yeah it makes me feel a little bit like never, never, that was too high never mind I'll find someone like you I wish So in a lot of ways, these are rhythms, but they're also left-hand accompaniments, um, which is super cool. I'm going to, not Netflix. I just clicked on Netflix instead of the piano tap. They're both kind of red and black, but there's no excuse for that mistake, really. Um, I'm going to show you. Hold on. I got to bring it up first. Three rhythms. Hopefully it comes up in my search. Come on. No, I didn't. Why not? Okay, I have a solution to this problem, which I'm going to use right now. While I'm doing this, I want you guys to tell whoa, to tell me a song that uses. Those are all four four examples. Tell me a song that uses six eight. <laughs> six 
six eight time. Um, Truman, do we have any answers? Ooh, that'll make this extra fun. Extra, extra, extra fun. I'm gonna check the members area answers in just a second. Mm -hmm. Six eight time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Come on, piano members. Perfect. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. House of the Rising Sun. Yeah, you guys are, these are great. You guys know you're 6'8". Oh, so proud. Okay. Guys, check out my screen for just a second. This is for our YouTube friends that haven't seen inside the members area. So this is how we have these set up. So the rhythms are actually notated for this. And if you hit practice, um, sure, Chrome can be, no, no. Thank you. Okay, if you hit practice, this will come up. You can press play. And in real life, you'll hear this being played. You can speed it up or slow it down, and then you can play right along with it. So if you're like, I don't know how this rhythm's gonna work. Oh, you can hear it now. It's right there. And so you can use all three of these features to practice along, hear the rhythm, play with the rhythm. And here's the really cool thing. Look, if you press these dots, you can practice it in a whole bunch of different keys. There you go. It transposes it for you. It's awesome. So if you're not a piano member and you're watching this on YouTube, that's just one of the many features that would be amazing for you to use to help with your practices. Okay. Circling back, we have to talk about 6-8. We absolutely do have to talk about 6-8. So feeling the difference between You shout it out, but I can't hear Reasons another great example of that. Um, and so this feels different than two, three, four, one, two, three, or just went to the Beatles. It happens every time. It's just there. Jeez Louise. Awesome. I know we had um, Brett guesting on In Theory this week and talking all about time signatures, which is awesome. So Brett certainly covered some more of the advanced time signatures. Um, for sure, Addy, what's going on, Joy? Oh, Joy, that was very fast work with the link. My goodness. In Theory is a live stream for piano members where Kevin goes live and talks all about theory and it's pretty much amazing. Um, so there you have the three main accompaniment rhythms I wanted to teach you today. And we've talked a little bit about the difference between three, four, and six, eight. So I'm gonna hop into the questions right now, but if you have any more questions about rhythm in general, um, please uh, pop them into the chat. I'm just finding you guys the link for Turkish March. Joy, it's in songs and not quick tips, which might be why it's being a little bit tricky to find right now. Um, but it does exist, I promise. There it is, how to play Turkish March. There you go. There's a place for us. A time and place. Sin and the clowns. Oh, isn't there rich? Aren't we a pair? You with your feet on the ground. No, me with my feet on. Who's got their feet on the ground? You, you're in midair. I've got my feet on the ground. I think that's how that goes. You in midair, send in the clowns. Yes, the remainder will just be me singing and feeling my very fuzzy sweater. I may have just bought this only because it was soft. It feels like you're wearing a cloud and a hug at the same time. It's so ridiculous. And I just love it. I absolutely love it. Um, me with my feet on the ground and you in midair, which doesn't feel right for me to sing personally because I am the one in midair, certainly not with my feet on the ground. 
that's why that didn't work out. <laughs> okay, I'm going to the questions. I am going to the questions. Whoa, there's some questions in here. Okay. I'm just checking down right now to see if there's anything rhythmic related. I feel like you guys are so solid with your rhythm right now. Um, this is from Bubba Bear. I'm trying to land the song yesterday. I have no problem playing the melody in the line. My problem is when I try to fit the chords in. I know how to play the chords. It's just trying to fit them in with the melody. Even though can form the chords, my progression is choppy. Okay, yesterday. Are you learning that in the piano t song library? This is my question. Do we have yesterday? Did I teach a lesson on this? There are many things to be asked here. Hold on. Yesterday. Oh, I sure did. Yesterday, all my dreams seem so far away. I love it when I teach something and I don't remember. Okay, we have this in the members area. I'm going to see if I can help you. Whoa, what is happening? I'm going to read notes. Okay, so the first thing I do when I'm trying to help myself, this is rhythmic actually, very rhythmic. When I help, when I'm trying to help myself get the chords and the melody paired together, is you have to feel the song in your body first. So I actually often will hum it. Yes, yesterday, that's too high for me. Yesterday, all my trouble seems so, that's too high, so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay, oh I believe. And that could not be in a worse key for me. In yesterday. That doesn't matter because we're going to play it with my hands. Okay, so you have to feel it. Yesterday. All oh, my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Okay, there's something to be said for singing this instead of playing it. Because it's it's one thing to read the notes and play them all correctly, and it's another to be able to keep a rhythm while you're singing the melody. So I highly recommend it, even if you're not pitch accurate, as just an exercise to help prepare you for this. Now, the other thing, count. Four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Now notice, I wasn't playing the sevenths. I was actually just playing really simple triad shapes to start because there's a lot of chord changes in this song. So sometimes that can feel really overwhelming. Just in case you don't have it, piano members, I'm gonna throw you guys the link to the tutorial right here so you guys can jump in if Dory hasn't done that already. And you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, so for me, there's that E minor seven. where they're placed over top of the words on the lead sheet. So I'm not doing anything fancy yet. And I think that you'll find with a song like this, fifth root pattern it's like a sh shortened version of what happened earlier you can go root fifth root like this so I'm breaking it up I'm kind of adding extra rhythmic notes when it feels right and then other times I'm just playing and holding the chord shapes so that's a lot of information <laughs> um, but I'm hoping that that makes it a little bit helpful I I find that with left-handed accompaniments we often tried so hard at the beginning to do all these fancy incredible things but it, it doesn't the left hand's meant to be the accompaniment it doesn't have to carry the song so when you're just Solid chord. 
chords from fifth root from fifth root and I just landed on the F to end so there was nothing particularly fancy happening it was just coordinating my hands to be able to do those things so start very simply um, I hope it gives you some ideas for things that you can do with it okay so moving on we have a question from Alan in last week's theory lesson, Kevin was talking about using the metronome. There's only one aspect of using the metronome I don't fully understand. Uh oh. At a slow to medium tempo, the metronome is usually set to one click per beat. But at some point, I see it being switched to one click per multiple beats. I can understand that when the metronome is at a very high speed, that the individual clicks can become almost indistinguishable. So one might want to switch to more than one beat per click. So the metronome is running more slowly. But that happens. It always seems to me that it's easier to have one click per note. I think there are different ways that you can set this up. So um, here's an example. I'm going to try to use an example from the members area. I'm going to go to Turkish March, since this is something that we actually did earlier when I was teaching this, I was playing it with a metronome. Um, now the tempo says 120 for the quarter note. So what that sounds like is this. So that's a lot going on and I'm getting two clicks per measure. Um, these are 16th notes. So I could also make the decision to move that to 60, half of 120, and then I would have one click per measure, and that would work too. But did you see how I had a harder time finding where I was and staying on track? Because it wasn't enough information for me to like orientate myself. If I was a, like a really good drummer, um, I could do that. Or if I was just extremely amazing at rhythm. Yes, I, I could even do that if I was really concentrating, but it's not helping me. So I could have done the metronome at 60 and I would have had one click per measure, but having it at 120, even though it feels a bit more frantic, more information and it helps me to stay where I, I want to be. So I could even double that and go to 240. Does this metronome even go to 240? And that's going to sound bananas. It does. It goes to, yep. So in these measures, in measure six, seven, and eight, because I'm working with eighth notes, I'm getting one click per note. <laughs> so fast but that stresses me out so 120 feels way better so it's kind of at the end of the day it comes down to the math and what's going to best serve you as you're trying to get through the song so 60 didn't feel like enough information 120 felt like okay i've got two clicks per measure and that feels like i can stay on track and know where i'm going if i was really struggling i might have chosen 240 even though it's like wow ah, what's going on but it's way more information and it's going to maybe help me to place my beats more accurately for me the middle one seemed and seemed to be the best choice it felt the smoothest um, so I hope that's a helpful, I hope that's a helpful answer. Um, and that tempo is way too fast for me, by the way. I do not enjoy playing it at that speed. There is a practice feature for Turkish March. So if you go into there right now, you're gonna see below the video, sound slice is there. You can speed it up, slow it down. Um, and I do not recommend that you start at the tempo 120. That's absolutely crazy. I think that somewhere closer to like 75 or 80 is a much less stressful starting point. Mm. Okay, moving on. Moving on, moving on. Um, hi, Kevin and Lisa. Let me say I love Piano Bench. Yay, this is from Lynn. You're both amazing musicians and inspiring teachers. I have a question. Thank you. Recently, I came across the following term written on a piece of music and was wondering if you could explain it to me and demonstrate what it means. Ped molto. I know it has to do with the pedal. I don't know. Ped, ped molto. I have no idea. I've never seen that. 
Molto means much, very. So I think that means use lots of pedal. That's my best guess for you. Use all of the pedal. So yeah, use it lots. It sounds beautiful um, to have the pedal. I'm pretty sure that I use a pedal for absolutely everything that I play, so. Um, <laughs> Telex, I have a semi-weighted keyboard and a weighted one coming later. Should I want, wait to start piano with the weighted? Do you recommend doing weighted semi together on and off or only practicing with weighted? Okay, this is a great question. Truman, Truman over here. Truman. Come say hello. Share the bench with me for a moment, Truman, hold on. Yeah, that looks like a bench we can share. We can share it, it's enough. Okay, this is Truman. Truman Hi. is Mr. Synth Man. <laughs> this back bench makes the terriblest noises. Do you hear them? Yes. It sounds like farts. It's just the bench. <laughs> it's just the bench. So Truman, you play on like mostly semi-weighted. That's right, yeah. yeah. Synth action. Synth action. So when I go to play one of Truman's instruments, I'm like, ugh, my finger, this isn't working. Oh, it allows me to play fast. It allows me to play fast. How do you feel when you go to a real piano? It's a different kind of experience. It's um, a heavier experience, a more nuanced one maybe. Yeah. It's like you have a little more weight in the keys and maybe a little more control of volume at times. Definitely, yeah. You really feel the, the weight. And then with a, a synth, you are like able to fly super fast. And the, the synth gives you another layer of control with the, like an aftertouch, with like a mm. pressure that you can apply thereafter too. There's a little bit of difference between a piano key and a synthesizer or a keyboard or key. Semi-weighted key. Yeah. So there's no right or wrong answer. Um, Truman shreds it up on his synths and it's amazing. And I think it just takes a little bit of time to reorient yourself on either or. Just, yeah, a little bit of time. A little bit of time. Thanks for being on the spot, Truman. You're welcome. Okay, that was lovely sharing the bench with you. <laughs> Truman is so special. Were those synth sound waves, Truman? Because I know that synths use waves of sound. They do, and you shape those waves. And you shape them. We need to do an episode on synthesis. Because it's so interesting. Okay. It's okay to mix and match as you learn absolutely. And honestly, if you have a piano and you're excited and you want to start learning, just start the lessons. Don't wait. Just do it. Just play the music. Okay. Um, all right. How are we doing? I'm going to go back to my questions here. This is from Favor. Does sitting on a piano bench to play the keyboard cause back pain? Because I'm feeling the pain. Yeah, sometimes. It depends how you're sitting, and it depends how used to sitting you are, and it depends what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life, um, and how your body is feeling in general. So when I, <laughs> famously growing up, you'd, my mom would catch me practicing like, like this sometimes. <laughs> a recipe for disaster. So you'll still catch me. I often will be playing with my legs crossed, which is not ideal. Ideally, feet are flat on the floor. Your knees are just under the lip of the piano here. You are sitting without, you don't want your butt sort of like arched. You want to have your pelvis sort of forward slightly so that you're stacked nicely on the bench and you feel stable and you want enough room to move through. It's important that you're not hunched over and it's important that the stress of learning doesn't cause your shoulders to creep up. So this is why it can be extremely beneficial to spend a few minutes before you start playing to mentally arrive at the piano and physically arrive at the piano. So things to check in with are, how does my body feel on the bench? Where are my shoulders today? And then as you start to play, you can do some shoulder rolls first, some stretching. As you start to play, and maybe you're studying some music and you are leaning forward, or maybe you're concentrating really hard and you're starting to tense. You have to mentally check in regularly to drop those shoulders and make sure that you're properly postured at the piano. And of course, like anything, when you're new to the piano and you're starting to spend time on the bench, your body's gonna have to adapt to it. So it's not abnormal that you're feeling kind of like, this is uncomfortable. Okay. Doug uses an office chair with no arms with the chair seat slightly leaning down. That's amazing. So that's making adjustments for what works. I've had other people practice on those ball things. Um, and that may uses a honeycomb cushion on my bench for extra comfort. So there's, you can make adjustments to make the process of practicing feel better for you. Um, okay. 
How are we doing for questions? Alan, on a lead sheet where there are two chords indicated beside each other, i.e. C, then another C, how should this be played to be interesting? Ooh, so that just means you're hanging out on C for a while. So check this out. I'm gonna play C in second inversion. I'm gonna play octaves. I'm using sus chords, sus two, sus four. See, I'll do it in root position first. So this could be your first C. This could be your second C. And you could spend a lot of time on just one chord. You could add a slash in the bottom, so instead of playing C as the root, you could play C as the bass. Sorry, E as the bass. Especially if you're moving to like F. Gives you just that little extra lift that can sound super fun and super pretty. Um, thank you for the student of the week reminder. Annette, <laughs> I do have a student of the week. Okay, so I will announce that now. While I'm announcing the student of the week, now's the time to get your final questions or song requests in. We still have a little bit of time to just hang out and have some shenanigans. So I, I don't think this particular student is in the chat with us today. Um, I don't have a video of this student, but even though there's no video, I really wanted to take a moment to celebrate. I'm just getting the link. Hold on, because I'm going to share the link. Oh my gosh. I'm button mashing on the um, keyboard as well as the keyboard, both of the keyboards. Okay. So this student of the week. Are you going to do the chord? And then I do this. That's it today. It's KJ Anime! So KJ is one of our younger piano students. KJ is 12 years old, shows up for our lives, always has something to say in the chat, has just started a practice thread, which I'm sharing in the members area right there. Um, and I just think it's so amazing that we've got so much passion for the piano from KJ. So. Congratulations, KJ. If you send an email to myself or Kevin, Lisa at pianote.com or Kevin at pianote.com, we can send you out a little student of the week prize. So congratulations for being awesome. Okay. All right, I'm heading back to that questions tab for a second. See if anything else has popped up. All right. There's no more questions. I have answered them all. Um, guess what I'm teaching tomorrow. I've been promising this for a long time, but it's actually happening. Moonlight Sonata is happening. Yep. So I'm going to be practicing that tonight. Um, I don't know any Harry Potter movie music. So hype. I have none in my repertoire. Um, Genesis, I'm watching for your question. You can feel free to type that in. Oh, KJ, you are here. Congratulations. Um... Can you play It's All Coming Back to Me by Celine Dion? Sure can try. Um, I haven't been practicing that one, but I can try. It's all coming back to me now. That's one of the best songs ever written of all time. In my opinion. I also think it's kind of hard to find the chord chart. Uh, Genesis is saying, how can I move both hands in but a different way? Well, you need to start with contrary motion scales because now we're moving in different directions. Especially good to practice these in different keys where you have a sharp, two sharps. This is bending my brain a little bit. I haven't done this in forever. So contrary motion skills will definitely, definitely help with that. Mark, I am good. I had a great morning, I had a great salad, I had a great workout, I had a great cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm in a great time hanging out with you guys. Okay, there was something I said, oh, I was gonna say, gonna play, it's all coming back to me now. I have a feeling that, like, my brain is telling me that the chord charts are really bad for this song. So let's just see what happens. Um, it says it's the QC, that seems right. Bit 
the song. There were nights when the wind was so cold that my body froze in bed if I just listened to it right outside the window. There were days when the sun was so cruel, all the tears turned to dust and I just knew laughing because it's a little bit theatrical but it's also absolutely like the most fun to play so thank you for that uh, request Emily <laughs> so I have to confess this was one of oh, those are very nice things to say this was one of the first songs that I bought sheet music for that wasn't like my classical repertoire so I'm dating myself. Once upon a time, before the internet, um, no, the internet was around, but you didn't just, there was no musicnotes.com. So you'd have to go to a music store and they'd have like single, like singles version, which would just be like one little like folder thing of one song at a time. So you could buy your songs a la carte. So I remember we bought this one. Oh, I wonder if it's still at my dad's place in the, the old piano stuff. Um, and this was one of the songs. And I remember it had chords above the lyrics and I, I had the best time ever just singing and playing it. But that was like 15 years ago. Whew. And I keep promising that I'm gonna learn it and actually perform it properly one day. So we'll see. Um, I'm glad you guys like that. You guys are all very, very sweet. Gina, you can play like that and get your left hand to cooperate. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw the chord chart into both of the chats, there's one on um, members, there's one on YouTube. Guys, click this for a second, okay? I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. This all comes back to like the accompaniment stuff that we were doing earlier in this lesson. Um, so if you're following the chord chart, watch this. There were nights when the wind was so cold. What does my left hand do? It just, nights when the wind was so cold. That my body froze in bed if I just listen to it right outside the window. So all that I am doing is root fifth. For the E minor, I chose to play E and C just because it sounds a little better. So it's technically a G chord, okay. Not a G chord, a slash chord for the C. And then root fifth, root fifth, and then I could do a root fifth root. So it's very simple. It looks fancy because I'm playing all these sus rolls in my right hand. There were nights when the wind was so cold that my body froze in bed if I just listened to it right outside the window. There were days when the sun was so cruel. Just root fifth root. All my tears turned to dust and I just knew It's 
about staying as simple as possible until it becomes almost boring, then you allow yourself to add another layer of, of challenge and difficulty. So if you want to get to a place where you can do a song like this very well, <laughs> you need your scales, you need your arpeggios, and you need your triads. So in traditional learning, we're always taught, practice your skills, your triads, do your technique. And that's exactly what you have to do. That is correct information. A lot of what I'm trying to do at piano is take the song and use that as the carrot. So it's like, you got it. This is where you get to go. This is your template. This is your basis. And if you do the scales and the triads and the arpeggios in the, in the chords from the song, you're going to be learning something that you can apply to a song that you love. And that's the whole thing. You don't get me started on songs because I'll just never stop. Um, Tim, that's a great idea. I love the idea of a, of a lesson like Kevin's Five Levels of Boogie Woogie, but for accompaniment. So we could pick a song maybe and then build it in five levels. In fact, Tim, we could probably do that at one of our piano benches. So let me talk to Kevin about that a little bit. We could work out maybe a vote in the members area. You guys could pick a song for us and then we could build that out for you in five levels and maybe do some sheet music stuff to back it up. Ooh, I love that idea. How are our YouTube friends doing? Um, we've got a pretty good deal going on right now, Genesis, for the piano membership. I think where we're at right now is, if you just go to piano.com, it's all there. But it's at $197. We're giving you a planner with it, a chords poster, a scales poster, and a practice poster. And that's all coming with the membership right now. It's a super good deal. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. I'm just quickly checking the, the questions tab. We're good there. Guys, this went so fast. How did that happen? I don't know. I had a lot of fun though. How's everybody feeling? Um, Tim, how many gold stars until you get a free t-shirt? Tim, have you not gotten a free t-shirt? This is concerning. Um, laugh, laugh, LOL. Ooh, Terry started a Christmas song yesterday. <gasps> Guys, there's something I'm not supposed to tell you. It's about Christmas. It's about Christmas songs. Um, I don't have any here. Okay, I'll have something to show you guys soon, but I'm not telling you this officially, but unofficially we may have worked on a Christmas. It might have arrangements all created for you by Kevin in it. It might be perfect. Okay, I'm a very bad secret keeper, very bad. Don't tell Kevin I spilt the beans. I can keep some secrets. Eleni, that's what happens when you have your sisters in the chat. Um, Tim hasn't earned a t-shirt yet. All right, Tim, here's the deal. I would like you to send us a video of you playing the piano, something that, anything, you can play anything. It can be wonderful, it can be terrible. I just want you to send us a video of you playing something that you've learned from piano that you have found particularly helpful or wonderful. If you send in a video, we'll share it next um, piano bench and I will send you a free t-shirt of your choice. That is your special challenge, Tim. You may accept it, you may decline it, but it's out there now. Um, Thomas has a friend that wants to try piano. Um, and you clicked on invite my friend yesterday and the email I sent did not have any information with it. Well, you should be able to invite a friend. If that doesn't work for you, Thomas, email support at pianote.com and they will give you a link specifically that you can use. Tim, I know it's a very hard bargain, um, but I just, that's what I came up with. That's, that's where I'm feeling today. Okay, gold star, gold star t-shirt. Maybe I'll draw a star on it. I, we don't actually have them like, in, we'll see. Anyways, we'll, we'll see what you come up with, Tim. We're all here ch cheerleading you on. Um, and you can be silly with it too. Um, I don't know the Bridgerton song. Uh, Steven, you should definitely practice contrary motion scales. Concentrating on one song is not bad, Richard. Um, concentrating on one song is good for sure but you can concentrate on more than one. So there you go. Truman, I did tell them. I'm telling Scott. 
Don't tell Scott. Don't tell Scott. Okay. Tim, I hope you sleep very well tonight. Take your magnesium and zinc vitamins. It will help you sleep. Just have some yoga and meditation before bed, and then it'll all be all right. And um, Passy's concentrating on one song of five to eight weeks at a time. Yeah, that's a really good idea, Passy. <laughs> Let it be, Tim. <laughs> Okay, so I didn't tell you about the Christmas book. Um, we had some fun today. I loved hanging out with you all. Thanks for being here. I always feel so honored that you guys choose to spend your time with me, um, which just, it's just, it blows my mind and I love it. Um, okay, thanks for being here. We'll come back. We'll come back next week. We'll ask Kevin how his time in Mexico was. Um, have an amazing rest of your weeks. Go play the piano. Stay in touch and we'll see you next time.